Chapter 12, Year 872, PXF, Summer Talon sat alone in his flat of rooms at the sojourn's rest. Night was finally pulling its cloak across a day that Talon wished had already ended. Most people found their birthdays a time for celebration, or at least nostalgic, sentimental reflection. For Talon, those things had faded from his birthdays long ago. Even as darkness fell across Arnador, the heat of midsummer still permeated every nook of the city, and Talon's rooms were no exception. His impressive form was not built to shed heat effectively, and certainly not when the air was as warm as his skin. His damp tunic clung heavily to his shoulders, and rivulets of sweat traced their way down his back as he sat on the large bed in his room, feet firmly planted on the floor. His head rested in his calloused hands, his hair creating a curtain behind which he could hide from the world and what he could only label as his failures. He turned thirty-five this eve. A new year of his life, toasted in with ale and a table full of his favorite dishes from the Sojourn's Rest Kitchens, served up by Lolly Kelderman. Lolly, as always, was a wellspring of kindness and good cheer, carrying nearly thrice the amount of joy that should fit in her tiny halfling frame. He graciously put on a show of happiness and thanks to all involved and invited. Talon brightly asked for second helpings from Lolly's seemingly bottomless serving dishes at the meal, even though the familiar foods held a bitter aftertaste for him. The guilt of Miss Haddington having gone to her final rest two years earlier while he had been away on an envoy mission for the Duke still gnawed at him. After far too many slaps on the back and old man's, Talon made his escape upstairs though not before spotting Faldan and Ella across the main room of the inn. Now married with a half-dozen children, one practically an adult already, their happy family all lifted a hand or mug in acknowledgement of his celebration. Talon claimed they couldn't see the effect their friendly gesture had on his face due to the dagger he felt plunge into his chest from it. As Talon turned and continued up the stairs, his mind dwelled on how his jealousy of Ella and Faldan initially spawned the idea of his hunting trip with Riken. Added to everything else of the evening, it sent Talon into the downward spiral in which he now found himself. Back in his room, sitting on the bed, Talon desperately needed to take his shirt off to relieve his body of some of the heat oppressing it, but he found he couldn't. Every thought of making an attempt roused the ghost of Riken sitting shirtless on that tiny bed in his room behind the forge. Talon found his feet were likewise nailed to the floor, no matter how much he knew stretching out might help cool him. As he stared down through the spread fingers supporting his head, and at the feet that had carried him thousands of leagues in his search for Riken, it was incomprehensible that he now couldn't move them even a few inches to put them up on the bed. Talon's mind retreated from the fear that if they found their way there, he would crave and perhaps even feel the comforting caress of Riken's foot against his own, and, like a drowning man who can't breathe yet still craves air, Talon wasn't sure he could survive it. So Talon sat in a soaking wet tunic, thick mane of hair lank and damp hiding his face, feet firmly locked to the floor, frozen in the misery visited upon him by the echoes of his past. Though Talon's body was frozen, the slithering voice in his mind, still with him after all these years, loved to take these opportunities to strike. Eighteen years had passed since the Farseer had taken Riken, almost fifteen since Talon had gained the skills to begin his search for him. And what did he have to show for his efforts? Currently, it was an inability even to put himself to bed. Talon knew the voice was a part of the last remaining dark chain still attached to his soul, but that knowledge wasn't helpful at times like these. Why couldn't Talon be normal like everyone else? Over the years of interacting with and observing the patrons of the main tavern room of the Sojourn's Rest, Talon had seen rebounds from crumbled relationships happen in less than an hour. The voice guided Talon's musings to the fact that, for many, sex did seem to be the magical peacemaker. For reconciliations or broken hearts, the panacea for all ailments of the human heart seemed to return to that one single act. On many an occasion, when caught in public or private gatherings deep in his dark thoughts, someone would believe that they were the one who could provide that universal cure for him if just given a chance, that they would fix Talon of what ailed him. He did try once. 
As that thought entered his mind while his body remained frozen on the bed in his rooms, Talon felt a ghostly arm wrap around his broad shoulders. He leaned into the phantom embrace and was transported back in time to a warm, starry night years earlier on the shores of the Saradan Sea. Eight years earlier. 864 PXF. Late Spring. Talon was following a lead he had picked up in Jadenpool while escorting Duke Isul to the Exposition of Arcane Wonders there. The Exposition was a marvel of the age, with magics and artifice the likes of which Talon had never seen. Mages from as far away as Balathira and Qualverine exhibited sorcerous feats of incredible beauty and breathtaking power. Bards from the competing musical schools of Highmount and Falwinari took not only to the main stages for compositions of dazzling complexity, but also to the corners of almost every thoroughfare for more simple tunes, filling the atmosphere of the exposition with a constant ebb and flow of music. The Duke seemed to enjoy the wonders on display, but was acutely aware of their power and troubled by them. Due to this, he cut his trip to Jadenpool short, leaving the city and the exposition unexpectedly long before his scheduled departure, after attending a private meeting with the Emperor that left him in a sour disposition. While strange, the Duke's early departure was a boon to Talon. He had never been to Jadenpool, and with the number of visitors the exposition drew, he had uncovered many rumors and tales regarding fiendish incursions and Uldani shamans in the surrounding regions of the Empire. The most promising one centered around reports of an Ignitheris, a demon made of sand and fire, nesting near the port of Sharinzar in the far eastern reaches of the empire. Begging leave of Duke Isul, with the promise of even more renown for his small southern duchy, Talon, with the blessing of his liege, remained behind while Duke Isul returned to Arnador with the rest of the guard. Spending far too much coin, Talon enlisted the help of a down-on-his-luck mage and teleported to the far reaches of the Zalian Empire, where the Saradan Sea met the Ignifel Desert and the city that lay between, Sharinzar. While now inhabited mainly by human citizens of the Empire, the city was indisputably not of their construction or design. Scholars who spent lifetimes studying its architecture would argue endlessly about its elven influences, dwarven motifs, or, most controversially, even pre-dragonborn draconian elements. Most locals, though, attributed their city's construction to the enigmatic people of Qualverine, who came from across the vast eastern sea. There was no direct evidence of the connection, mainly due to Qualverine's harsh one-way immigration laws and policy of seclusion from the societies on the western continents. But locals would speak of the familiarity tourists from Qualverine would have with Sharinzar and the frequency of their visits. The architecture of Sharinzar was alien to every other city in the known world, though that moniker seemed to be getting more extensive and increasingly diverse with each passing year. Nevertheless, Talon had never seen anything like the port city nestled between sea and desert. Impossibly thin towers soared into the sky, connected by bridges that defied gravity. Every structure looked like it was created out of tinted sand and stained glass, spun and woven by some giant hand making castles on the beach. The city's lack of symmetry, recognizable forms, or cohesive color palette added to its haunting beauty. As the sun moved overhead, the interplay of shadow and light through the woven buildings and shifting colors changed the city's aesthetic hour by hour. It was in this dreamlike cityscape that Talon encountered Ramed. Talon had been less than subtle in surveying the city, both in trying to make sense of its layout and keeping his ear out for rumors of the Ignitheris. He also had kept his eyes open for anyone he could hire as a guide or convince to join him on his search for the fiend. That was when he found Ramed, or, more accurately, Ramed found him. Ramed intercepted Talon while he ate an intricately spiced local dish under the stretched fabric awnings of an outdoor marketplace. Talon spotted him when he approached, as Ramed was hard to miss. Against the backdrop of the flowing structures of the desert city, Ramed was a striking figure in his well-used brass armor and flowing white robes, his attire offsetting his smooth dark skin the color of shipwright's teak and shining eyes of polished sandalwood. 
I hear you are looking for the demon of the dunes, and possibly a guide? I am Ramed, and you need to look no further. Ramed, uninvited, confidently sat down at Talon's table across from him, and helped himself to a piece of the soft flatbread off the corner of his plate. Talon, who would have usually been put off or possibly offended by such forward behavior, couldn't help but be intrigued and captivated by this stranger's demeanor and the bright smile he flashed while chewing a bite of the pilfered flatbread. Perhaps, Talon replied coyly, though, if honest with himself, he had already made up his mind. It is settled, then, replied Ramed, reading Talon's intent. Of course, if you need a more physical demonstration of my talents, that can be provided, Ramed added, luridly and seductively. Talon must have inadvertently projected his weariness and fatigue of such advances, as the swarthy stranger immediately corrected his trajectory. Or we can talk about the business at hand, and the skills I can provide. Boundaries set, and Talon still needing a guide and partner, the two discussed a strategy for tracking the Ignatheris. They spent the rest of the afternoon and well into the evening at that same table, Ramed guiding them through a veritable mosaic of food and drink as they traversed easy conversation and details of the coming journey. Their tete-a-tete finally turned to Talon's real reason for being in Chirinzar and his search for Riken. Over the previous seven years of his search, Talon had discovered he needed to approach the subject warily. The topic of Uldani and shamanistic traditions could tread on many people's prejudices, religious beliefs, and imperial biases. So, without too many details, but in an attempt not to sound overly vague, Talon inquired of Ramed if he had heard of anyone using elemental magics in the area. Yes, yes, I have. Ramed's voice dropped to a conspiratorial whisper. A fierce warrior of the sands, wielding both sword and the elements with unmatched aptitude and prowess. Then adding, Quite handsome, I hear, as well. It's you, isn't it? Talon asked. Try as he might, he couldn't hold back the smile his charismatic companion inspired in him, and Ramed gave him a sly wink as confirmation. Talon did not inquire any further about shamans or Uldani. Even if this was a dead end for finding Architavia Thorandis, there still was a fiend that needed to be sent back to the Nine Hells, and one never knew what clues it might have in its hoard, or what secrets could be coaxed out of it. With Ramed's help, Talon spent the next few days securing supplies for their trek into the desert. Ramed seemed to know everyone whose shop they visited, and Talon accepted that even if it was some elaborate con to bring business to his friends, they were getting good equipment at not ridiculous prices. It did ease his fears that it seemed truly everyone knew Ramed, not just the vendors they bought from or taverns they visited. From folks living on the streets to nobles passing by in their palanquins, all seemed to lift a hand in greeting or shout out a hail of friendship to Ramed. The swarthy desert warrior's easy manner was infectious and lifted spirits wherever they went. Finally, well provisioned and sure of their course, the two headed out into the Ignifel desert, not only to search for the Ignatheris, but Talon still hoped for any crumb of information that might help him locate the Farseer or Riken. Traversing deserts, involving moving primarily at night and finding or creating shelter during the day, makes for lonely travel without a good companion. Luckily for Talon, Ramed turned out to be one of the best. Witty but not overbearing, serious when the situation called for it but still a showman when circumstances allowed, Ramed made the nights of travel over the dunes seem less arduous and kept their days of rest hiding from the sweltering heat more bearable. Over the long weeks of travel, they learned much from each other, and of each other's lives. However, Talon held his tongue when it came to Riken, keeping his stories to ones of his life in the Duke's guard, or times before Riken arrived at the estate. Time and distance became a strange, viscous liquid in the desert, sometimes moving as slow as glass, and others with the speed of oncoming lava. Talon grew accustomed to and welcoming of Ramed's affectionate nature, and Ramed, with astute insight, never pressed beyond quick moments of friendly contact and platonic camaraderie. It took months, but the duo finally caught up with the Ignatheris in one of its multiple lairs throughout the region. 
Between Talon's prowess with the Vermilion Blade and Remed's skill with his dual scimitars and totemic magic, they finally defeated the demon after an extended battle. Talon attempted to extract some knowledge from it before it dissipated back down to the lower plains, but to no avail. The horde turned out to be nothing more than stolen treasures and trinkets from desert caravans it had ambushed. He left looting the horde to Remed as he dejectedly turned and left the cave, hopes dashed that this might finally be the lead he needed to find Riken. After the battle they waged during the daylight hours in the depths of the lair, the two traveled under the blazing sun a short but safe distance away from the Ignatheris's corrupted den and made camp. Ramed must have picked up on Talon's weary and wounded spirit after the battle, and he suggested they stay for the day and camp for the night as well, instead of moving on. As they sheltered from the afternoon heat, Talon could not initially place why he felt so emotional and distraught over the day's outcome, until he realized the date. It was nearly ten years to the day from his hunting trip with Riken at the spring. The realization crushed him like a boulder from the sky. How had a decade passed? Yes, there were other distractions in his life with his responsibilities for the Duke, but how had his search dragged on so long, and why couldn't he seem to either make progress or finally let it go? Talon sank into the darkness of his mind until Ramed spoke. A quiet, what troubles you, friend? From Ramed, as he handed Talon some cool, conjured water, was all it took for Talon to unburden himself. He told his companion about his lengthy search and the details of his old relationship with Riken. Ramed was the perfect listener as he recounted the lengthy tale, never intruding on the story but asking clarifying questions, not only to help him understand, but also to assist Talon in organizing his thoughts. Twilight was fading into night when Talon finally was out of words and had reached the part of his tale where Ramed entered it. Ramed, after a long silence, took a deep swig of his water and began to speak. In my culture, where we are not so obsessed with marriage and bloodlines and heirs, relationships such as yours are not uncommon. We consider them as blessed as any other and as interchangeable. He continued, How one feels and reacts toward one person is not always how they will react toward another. Ramed paused as though remembering some past pain. Every connection between two people is unique, and while a lost love can never be duplicated, it does not mean a new relationship can't be just as powerful. Talon heard and felt the honesty of the words, but still instinctively braced himself for what might come next. In his experience, people expressing such openness and candor did so with an expectation of physical response and an inevitable seduction. However, none came. Ramed left the tent and wandered away from the camp into the night. Talon wondered if this was part of a ploy as well, to have him follow and things to continue from there, but he did not have the energy for games this night. If there were hells to pay in the morning, so be it. Talon was surprised and relieved that he and Ramed's camaraderie and regular jovial interactions remained unchanged in the following days. As they traveled under the night sky on their return to Shirinzar, Talon thought more deeply on Ramed's words, and their possibilities. At the end of their first week of travel, over their morning meal before camping for the day, he took a deep breath to gather courage equal to what he often needed to face the greatest of foes. Ramed, may I ask for your help? Of course, my friend. There was no hint of subterfuge or the smug success of a predator after a long hunt, just a genuine desire to help. I need to find out if I can be with someone other than Riken, Talon confessed painfully. I can offer no promise of a present or future together, or that this will get any further than the intimacy of this conversation, but it has been a decade. While I am willing to search decades more, I am ashamed to admit... I am so tired of being lonely. My dear Talon, Ramed paused, voice filled with empathy. May I begin by just holding you? Ramed's voice was a balm as Talon silently nodded. Ramed went to his side, gently wrapped his arms around the larger man, and slowly rocked him 
as Talon crumpled into his embrace. As their journey back to civilization continued, Talon opened himself to Ramed's affections, and with the progression of their romance and physicality came an excitement and intoxicating exhilaration for Talon. Riken and he had only had a single day and night to explore their sensual relationship, where he and Ramed, while at a much slower, tentative pace, explored theirs for nearly three weeks. Ramed, in many ways, was objectively more aesthetically beautiful than Riken. Much of that was from a masculine maturity and confidence, but also his physical form was as near perfection as one could imagine. Over their weeks together, Talon tested and crossed many of the self-imposed boundaries he had placed upon himself, out of fear of them leading to an inevitable and immediate press for sex from a partner. With consent from his patient and willing confidant, he finally allowed himself a tactile exploration of Remed's body. He experienced it the way a sculptor appreciates a masterpiece, every nuance and line examined and admired. Talon did not anticipate the pleasure his ministrations would give Ramed, and a creeping disappointment and recognition began to enter his mind as he did not experience the same. When they were two days out from Sharinzar, early in their night's travel, Ramed led them to a high outcropping of sandstone where the city's lights and sea beyond were visible. Ramed looked to Talon with a not-so-innocent raised eyebrow, and Talon returned it with a nod of feigned confidence. The night was full of stars, and a crescent moon rose over the Saradan Sea. Even though the newness and thrill of his explorations with Ramed were wearing off, Talon promised himself he would not back away from this final step. He needed to know, and Ramed, somehow, by the blessings and light of the Silver Scribe, was willing to help him find out. Under the moonlight, they kissed passionately. At least, Talon hoped that was what Ramed was feeling. They then disrobed and lay down on the rugs and blankets from their packs. Talon began to let his fingers dance across Ramed's body. As always, he was physical perfection. Beneath the moonlight, Talon found every inch of him profoundly and breathtakingly beautiful. But even as Ramed's body began to react to his touch and the caresses were returned, Talon's own body refused to respond to him and could not ignite any desire or connection to Ramed in his mind. Feeling Talon's disinterest and rising distress, Ramed offered to help Talon however he could. Talon tried with every part of his being to get to a place where they could continue, but finally had to say no. Talon sat up and pulled away his mind now filled with shame, guilt, and the projection of all he was and wasn't and couldn't seem to be. Ramed, God's bless him, sat up with him and gently wrapped the blankets around them as they looked out to the sea and the rising moon. Ramed held Talon and gently rocked him as years of frustration and pain, loneliness and loss poured out of him as stifled choking wails into the night sky. That had been eight years ago, and there had been no one since. Present Year, 872 PXF Summer The moon over Arnador was high in the sky when Talon found he could move again, demons content in the amount of turmoil they had collected from him. Talon stood and peeled off the soaked tunic, which fell to the ground with a wet slap. Breaches soon followed. Wrapping a light robe around himself, Talon padded down to the private kitchen reserved for the rooms under a long-term contract. From the wellspout, he pulled a tankard of water conjured from the deep cisterns under Arnador, and was drinking deeply when a knock came on the kitchen door that led to the connecting alley. It was a messenger from the Duke. The sealed letter he carried summoned Talon to Arnador Keep at first light. Talon paid the messenger handsomely for the late-night delivery, and was happy Lolly hadn't been awakened to receive the message for him. Then, knowing he should get at least some rest before whatever lay ahead with the morn, Talon returned to his rooms. He donned a light pair of sleeping breeches and, clearing his mind, lifted his feet off the floor and stretched out on the bed. Talon wished he didn't see Riken's raven dark hair and stormy eyes as he exhaustedly drifted off to sleep but he did, accompanied by the maudlin memory of the aroma of Miss Haddington's spiced tea. <laughs>